2017 when the Wolverines defeated Indiana October 14th. This season, Michigan returns 21 total starters from last season. Coach, go ahead with your opening statement. Uh, good afternoon. Great to be here. Um, you're welcome to take any questions. All right, we'll take our first question right down here in front of you. Hey, Coach. Trevor Woods, Mason Brew. I think you'd agree that one of the great things about football is the continuous change, the continuous evolution each year, each game. With that said, this is a new year, a new Michigan football team. When you wake up in the morning and go to work, what gets you excited about the 2018 version of your Michigan Wolverines? Well, first of all, just um, what gets me the most excited is having a season to gear up for. Um, <clears throat> And that's pretty consistent with most of the people I talk to, whether it's high school players or coaches, college players, coaches, pro players, coaches. Uh, just very excited at this point and, and thankful to have a season to gear up for. Uh, I've also coached, talked to some other players or coaches that don't have a season to gear up for this year, and it's, it's sad. But I uh, also feel very good that, that I have a season to gear up for. So... Uh, Chopping at the bit, ready to go, Trevor. Take our next question right down in front of us on the other side of the aisle. Jim Adam Biggers, Great Lakes Divide. A lot of turnover, I guess, in, in the offensive coaching. I mean, you've had uh, Jed in there, I mean, Ed Warner this year, Greg Fry, run game coordinators, tight end coordinators. How close are you guys continuity-wise to really just nailing down the, the offensive side, the defensive side is there. How close are you guys to just nailing down the off offensive side coaching lines? Right. Um, great collaboration. I think that's what we've, uh, we were striving for uh, with our offensive coaching staff and um, great additions. Jim McElwain's been a great addition. Uh, Ed Warner's been a great addition. Sharon Moore has been a great addition. Um, you know, Jay Harbaugh uh, back is doing a doing a very good job. Pep Hamilton uh, doing a great job. We feel like we got a lot of good good football minds, guys that are uh, passionate about ball, and uh, also collaborating and working very well together. Um, you know, also added um, Ron Prince, who uh, has been a has been a, a real real blessing having him on the staff. Brandon Blaney. Ben McDaniels, uh, Roy Roundtree, uh, Patrick Kugler, also uh, uh, graduate assistant, uh, Alfonso Smith, um, and Tanner Engstrand, who uh, was the offensive coordinator at USD last year. So, uh, and it's been tremendous uh, collaboration. It needs to be, you know, when you have have um, that many good coaches, you need you need to draw from. Uh, from as many or all as you can. How confident are you this year knowing that you have some pieces there? Because your first three years has been kind of a, I don't want to call it a long door, but I mean, there's been there's been new turnover. How close do you feel that you are right now this to having the offensive staff? Feel good about it, Adam. Yeah. Take our next question all the way in the back, Coach. In the left. Connor O'Gara, Saturday Tradition. Coach, I've been asking other Big Ten coaches about, yeah, right over here. In the back. Where? Right over here. Got our, hand up. Our left where's coach. right over here? Our left. Stand up. In the back. I'll stand up for you. Okay. Um, I've been asking other Big Ten coaches about just uh, their overall thoughts on the effectiveness of the playoff system now that we've had four years to sort of digest this. Just what are your thoughts on, on just the, the effectiveness that you've seen? The thoughts on the playoff system, um, I guess the first thing that comes to mind is as uh, more would be more, more would be better, you know, in the playoffs. Four in right now, let's go to eight and eventually get to 16. Coach, we'll take our next question on our right here in the second row in front. Dan Hope from 11 Warriors. Michigan hasn't beaten Ohio State in six seasons. How much do you hear about that and how much pressure do you feel to change that this year? Yeah, we feel like uh, just improvement we need to improve um and that'll lead to success and lead to championships you know, that um that's simple coach will go all the way on our left here in the middle of the room 
Coach Crowley Sullivan, Spartans Wire. A little bit of a follow-up on that question. You came into Ann Arbor with perhaps the most hype of any coach in the history of the Big Ten, maybe in all of college football. A few years later, you've got a third place, third place, and fourth place finish, and you're one in five against Michigan State and Ohio State. What do you have to do this year to demonstrate to the Michigan community that you are on the path to achieving what they hired you to achieve? Well, the improvement will lead to success, will lead to championships. We'll take our next question, Coach, right here on our right, second row on the end. Hey, Coach, over here. Um, Where? Over, over here. Our right, Coach. Paul M. Banks, thesportsbank.net. In past years, you've visited the uh, soccer teams that have played in the big house when they've had these big games. You've done some promotional events with them. Do you have plans to go to the game this week or to do any kind of visiting with the teams, anything like that coming up? Yeah, um, really would... Uh, We'd love to see it, so plan on going to the game, and um, each year I've made it a point to go over and talk to the players and, and coaches. You know, I know they're busy too, but uh, it's always good, inspiring, and um, you know, always learn a, learn a couple things, which is good. Yeah, we're excited to have them. Coach, we'll take our next question all the way on our left on the end with Tim. Uh, Tim May, Columbus Dispatch. Hi, Coach. I was wondering... Uh, what has Ed Warner specifically brought to the program from your, from your vantage point? And then a, another question I'd like to ask is, from a quarterback situation, uh, is that an open book right now for you? Is Shea Patterson a leader, as some people uh, seem to assume? Just where do you stand in that situation? <clears throat> well, um, Ed has done a tremendous job. He's really brought a lot of enthusiasm, uh, wealth of knowledge, tremendous experience with um, – coaching in the Big Ten, uh, and just a good dude, uh, really, really good to work with. He's been, uh, been, uh, been fantastic. We enjoy watching tape with him, uh, enjoy talking football with him, uh, enjoy watching him coach, and um, you know, I think that's been a, been a really good thing for us. Uh, quarterback's uh, position, don't have any announcements to make today about that. Coach, we'll go all the way to our right here on the edge with Teddy. Hey, Jim. Teddy Greenstein from the Chicago Tribune. Any hey, concerns with if you went to eight or 16-team playoff, uh, it would water down the regular season, and is there a limit to how many games college football players should play in one season? <clears throat> well, I mean, the one AA teams um, have, have been very successful at that model. I think if my math is right right now, if you – Go play all the way through a national championship game. That would be 15 games, and um, you know, through a 16-team playoff, that would be 15, uh, 16 games, right? Under the current model, You'd probably take away the, the the championship, you know, the league championship game, would eliminate that one, and um, you know, so then it could be, yeah, it'd be 16 games. But only the two teams playing in the national championship would play that many games um that's kind of my thought about the amount of games that you would play i mean most teams would would still play 13. okay coach we'll come right down here on the corner uh, steve kornacki mgoblue.com how you doing jim good steve can you talk about Chase Winovich and how you've seen him evolve as a player and, and maybe specifically how he's gotten better going into this season? Yeah, well, the first thing that comes to mind with Chase is, uh, you know, the incredible work ethic that he has, the, the great effort that he always plays with. Um, a lot of people saw, talk about the motor that he has, and it's, that's uh, a great analogy. I mean, he's, he's always uh, he's always always playing uh, all out and uh, the talent is, has really really gone uh, up and up each year really finding his position uh, you know which is defensive end uh, has been has been great for his career and for our football team you know we he was a linebacker then you know we could see the speed that he had and and uh, 
was we're playing him at tight end, some, and then um, and then uh, he went to defensive end. Was playing some defensive end on the scout team, and 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 really was tough to block. Um, and from that point on, you know, he just developed a love and passion for playing the the defensive end position, and he and he's great at it. I think he'd also be a tremendous stand up outside backer. I mean, he'll be a he'll be a true uh, prototype. Uh, three, four outside backer um, and a nickel defensive end pass rusher. He'll bring a, he'll bring a lot of value uh, you know, at the next level, the pro level as well as the college level. I'm really exciting uh, for his season, praying for all good things to come his way uh, this season and pulling hard for him. Uh, he's a go blue guy all the way. Uh, enthusiasm and energy is infectious. Uh, in a real positive way, productive way for our football team. Coach, we'll come right back down directly in front. Coach, I was talking to Brady Quinn a little bit ago. He thinks quarterback Shea Patterson could be one of the become one of the best pure passers in college football. And I know it's a meritocracy. There's a competition that needs to unfold in August. You got Dylan McCaffrey, Joe Milton, some other guys. Just right. curious what that quarterback room's like and what you're thinking of it as we sit here in July. Sure. So, um, you know, it was a uh, very valuable. Shea Patterson went through all of spring practice with our with our team, and uh, you know, got got great work in there. Played really well. Um, Brandon Peters, uh, you know, was also improved this spring. Uh, Dylan McCaffrey probably had made the the most improvement of any quarterback on our roster. Joe Milton came in and and. Um, was a, a mid-year, so participated in spring practice as well and did very well. Uh, I think he's got a very, very bright future. And um, Michael Sessa did an, has done a fantastic job. Buck West uh, moved over from safety and receiver. Now he's going to play both quarterback and, and receiver. And, and um, that's, that's been our quarterback room. And I would say overall it's better. Um, as a group than where we were last year. Um, and I feel like our starting quarterback, you know, will also uh, be better, play better. And um, so that's, uh, that's how I would evaluate the room. Coach will come right back down in front here across the aisle. Jim, your, your thoughts on with Karan being on the Doak Walker watch list? I mean, there's Miles Sanders from Penn State, J.K. Dobbins from Ohio State, uh, Jonathan Taylor from Wisconsin. What are your thoughts just on the, the not only Karan's improvement, but just the overall complexion of running backs in the Big Ten? I think there's always been a great tradition of great running backs in the Big Ten. Um, always has, is, and probably always, always will be. Uh, Karan Higdon is an outstanding football player. Um, I always think of Karan and Chris Evans, Karan Hagen and Chris Evans, like they're, uh, you know, they're both great. They're both really, really good players, and that bodes really well for our football team. Um, both have really come into leadership roles on our team as the way it's developed over the last uh, nine months. And uh, that's also a really good team because they're thing because they've, They've embraced those roles. It's important to them. And, um, you know, it's important to, to, to each of them how they play, but it's also you see them working with the, with the younger backs. And we've got some, some talented younger backs. Um, and it's nice to see that those, those guys, Chris Evans in particular, grabs guys and, and goes over pass protections with them. Uh, always see Karan, you know, putting his arm around uh, a younger back or player and, and, uh, and talking to them, motivating them, teaching them. So um, can't say enough good things about Karan Higdon or Chris Evans, both. Coach, we'll go to the left side of the room and toward the back directly into that light. Chris Solari with the Detroit Free Press, Jim. Uh, wanted to get your opinion on the, the talk of the day about the potential for an injury report or availability report. And then also the, with the gambling aspect that, that's been allowed, how, how do you view that and how do you teach that to your players and your program? Uh, 
as, as, as far as gambling, don't gamble, don't associate with gamblers, uh, you know, avoid it like the, the plague, um, you know, don't walk, a, don't walk away from that run. Uh, had, a, had a very dear friend, Jim Bees, who passed away in the, he's passed away, but uh, great businessman, he owned, owned, owned muffler shops, and uh, he would talk about, hey, Jim, what do you think about this investment here? He goes, I wouldn't walk away from that investment, I'd run. It's always stuck with me. Um, that'd be the same advice I'd give players uh, as it relates to gambling in any form or fashion. And for, for, the, for the injury report, uh, injury you've, report? Obviously, yeah, yeah. Injury, you've obviously dealt with that at the pro level, which not a lot of college coaches have dealt with. Yeah, um, be, uh, be fine with that. Want to do an injury report? We can do an injury report. All right, Coach, thank you very much. That's all the time. Thank you. you.